Well, good morning and welcome to St. Swithin's Church. My name is Ben and I'm the Associate Vicar here. Good morning. My name is Victoria and I am one of the curates here. Well, you are all very welcome. Please continue drinking your coffees, eating your delicious... Uh, what have we got today? Something delicious at the back, a bit of brioche. We had, we had a brioche. Why not? We had also had a chocolate pancake thing, which was... And, and a chocolate delightful. pancake thing. It was wonderful. We are splashing out. We um, are. Our series that we're kick-starting for the summer holidays is a summer road trip. We're going to be looking at what do you take when you go on a road trip with you? And today we're looking at delighting in God's Word. And ever, it's wonderful to see you all here. Um, if this, this is your first Sunday, welcome. Um, on the back of your chair, you will find a QR code. And we encourage you to scan it uh, and join the adventure, join the road trip. Jo this oh, very good. We could Thank probably you. change that. The QR code's on the screens as, as well. well. So uh, let's stand together as we prepare to worship. We take time to acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is already here. We acknowledge that we've chosen to come and to worship him, to hear from him, to pray for his world, and to hear from his word. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We thank you that you move among us, and we pray that you stir us in worship, in prayer, and hearing your word. We pray that you revive your church we pray that you make each of us holy, strong, and faithful for your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Let's worship together.
Lord Jesus, we remember all the great things you have done for us. We thank you that you love us, that you are with us. We thank you that you are here as we worship you and sing glory to your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So the theme for today is to delight in God's word. And our reading is taken from Psalm 1. And if we could just have the words up on the screen, this is what we're going to be looking at. It says, happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. So this idea of delighting in the word, I just sat down and thought, what are my favorite quotes? And how many people in church would get them? Victoria, no pressure. Okay, I can do this. So feel free to shout out. I thought I'd start fairly simple. I've chosen films and songs. I thought I'd keep it nice and short in the scope of what we're going to do. And I'll try and do it without the accent of the people, not my accent. I can't help that. So the first one is, that'll do donkey. Great. Okay. That's good, wasn't it? Yeah, thank you. That was great. Did that sound right? No, I wasn't doing an impression. The next one <clears throat> is quite poetic in many ways. So I've given it away. It might be a song. Baby. I wouldn't risk that one. Baby, you light up my world like nobody else. Well done, Ruben. <laughs> the next, maybe for this side. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. <laughs> Literally, I'm looking at children and the adults are on like, but Toy Story. <laughs> That's right. She's got eyes of the bluest sky. Yes. Very good. Oh, very good. Did you know that, Victoria? I did know that. Good. Just checking. I've got them all right so far. Well, yes. the, you're doing really well as a team effort. This is a classic. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that. They're all classics. We're on a mission from God. <laughs> the Bible. <laughs> Maybe. I haven't even quoted the Bible. That's shocking. It is the Blues Brothers. Well done. And then this is an absolute... Again, they're all classics. Castle's in the classics. It makes me so happy. You can't start a fire without a spark. I'm sorry, we do not use his name. He is the boss. Well done, Bruce Springsteen. And the song is... Dancing in the dark. Well done, yeah. Thank you so much. Well done. Victoria, um, yeah. out of ten, maybe give you five. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's okay. Thank you. Room for improvement, but it's okay. Absolutely. I didn't know the Bruce Springsteen one. Sorry. You didn't know that one? No. I've seen him. <laughs> Outrageous. Cool. Let's not riot. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Victoria. That's all right. So delighting in God's word, what does it mean for us to be able to delight in God's word? And as you heard then, the more we hear certain phrases or we listen to songs, the more we remember those words, the more familiar we are with it. As I mentioned before that, my name is Ben, I'm the associate vicar, and it's my delight to welcome you here. The problem is if somebody was to say, Benjamin Eric Brady... I recognize that I'm in trouble. I recognize that something is wrong. And that's because that's what my mum would say. My full name. I would recognize her words when speaking to me. You see, the more we look into it like the game we had today, we realize that we can make jokes about it. We can recognize quotes from films and from songs. But again, it is 
going back to it over and over again. I've got a video to show which is looking at different ways that people read their Bible. So if you can find a screen and just watch it now. Hello, I'm Rachel and I read the Bible first thing every day with a cup of tea. Um, and I find it very helpful because I discover more about who God is, how much he loves me. And every so often I'll discover something absolutely brand new and read something new that I've never seen before. And it's amazing. Hello, my name's Harry and I read the Bible to help me get through times when I feel it's difficult. I read certain verses which will help me and it will get me through the day and it will be things that God has said which I trust in. I like to read my Bible in the morning before everybody else gets up and at the moment I'm using this book which just helps me to know what to read and has little spaces for me to write down what I'm praying for because the Bible can be quite confusing and it's really big and it's hard to know what to read, so I love to follow a plan. Hi, I'm Jo and I read the Bible every night to um, learn more about God. It takes me through all the books of the Bible. It helps me to know lots more. So as you see, people read the Bible at different times. They might read different versions of the Bible. But the fact is, they're spending time being familiar with the text. And what's interesting is that the Bible itself doesn't change. And what I've realised, um, we've got this in our house. I think it was stolen um, from a chandelier, which was broken, apparently. So if it's a missing piece, sorry, London. I assume it's from London, hoity-toity land. <laughs> Just pop out of there. But the Bible is like this. This does not change. No matter what's going on, it doesn't change. But the fact is that our situations do change. So that is hanging there. But eventually, something might happen. And as you walk, you get a different refraction. You get a different angle coming through it. As you can see, it might look flat to start with, but then when you tilt it, and you see that there's all these edges and all these different ways that the light comes through. And that is what it's like when we read our Bible. You might read the same story over and over again. For example, there's a story of the prodigal son, which is used a lot, where it talks about having that forgiveness from God the Father when the son had really messed up. There's a lot more to it, but that's it. But the fact is, he can come back to his father, and he's welcomed, he is loved. The more time you spend reading your Bible, I don't mean in chunks, but I mean over time, it's described by some people as an exercise. So you might go and pick up a heavy weight and start with it's too heavy. But as you practice and do it more, you'll be able to lift that weight. And for me, I think that's like when we read our Bibles, we become more open and aware to when God might speak to us, maybe through words, it might be through pictures, or it might simply be a feeling of peace. Sometimes it could be a sense, almost like that's tingling in your fingers, like when we pray for the Holy Spirit to come. We can delight in God's word because it does change lives. It reminds us and reminds me when sometimes I forget Jesus' promises For me, I delight in the Gospels. There's only four Gospels, and it's at the beginning of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And as a Christian, that means I want to follow Jesus. It means I want to be like Jesus. I want to act like him. I want to be and speak as much like him as possible. But how can I do this if I don't know what he is like? The answer, this is where the Gospels come in. Rachel mentioned it in the video, but I'll say it again. That I'm surprised every time at how much, maybe sometimes I forget, or maybe I don't quite remember the wording of Jesus. I love being able to enter into the stories, imagining myself there with Jesus, what's being said. And I love the fact that you get to read how Jesus transformed lives back then. And it's a reminder that he still transforms them today. 
We actually know the Bible more than we realize. Those of us who've grown up in church, we might say it differently. It might be a different translation, but it still has the same meaning. So if I was to say to you, finish this sentence, for God so loved the world. Whew, that could have backfired. <laughs> Phew. That's right, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that those who believe in, in him will not die but will have eternal life. Well done. That is John 3, 16. You do know some scripture. It spoke to you. It resonates within you. If I was to say, as we will later, our Father in heaven. I mean, you know the rest, hopefully. Well done. Again, that is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. It's a prayer that we get straight from uh, the Bible. We get it from the Gospels. And we join the disciples saying to Jesus, how do you pray? And that is what he gives us. I just think that shows that we can do it. Maybe for some of you, you grew up going to church and you had to do memory verses. I remember asking you, will receive, seek and you'll find, knock on the door, will be open unto you, Luke 11 verse 9. <laughs> and with that memory verse and a clean tent, I didn't have to peel the potatoes uh, Pathfinder's Camp. <laughs> the power of Scripture. <laughs> but to close, we can do it. You can choose a gospel. It doesn't matter which one. You can choose a gospel to draw close to God, to hear what Jesus was like, and to show us what he is still like now. And I honestly believe that that is where the delight comes from. We can delight in it as we delight in our favorite songs, our favorite films. We can delight when you know scripture and then you see it happen before you. When you see the fact that God does love the world, that God does bring transformation, and that he longs to draw close to each of us. And that's why I think we should delight in the word. Let's stand together. Before we continue in prayer, Victoria has something very exciting to share with us. Um, this is my first go at um, trying to create a bookmark. It's gone a bit small, but we'll work with it. Um, so, hang on. So I encourage you after the service to take one of these home and as you're reading perhaps a book or the gospel, uh, take this as a reminder of uh, the joy that it is of finding God in his word and become expectant that he will meet with us through his word. Um, it is a bit small, I'm very sorry, but um, can you read that? Yeah, just about. Great, okay. Cool. I may suggest you maybe read your Bible in the morning or in the high sun. In the light, yes. <laughs> but yeah, there are one for each of you before you go, so please do um, find me and we'll happily give it to you. Thank you so much. Wonderful, they'll be at the back. Yeah. So just as we've given time to sing to the Lord, to hear from his word, so we're going to allow time now for God to speak to us. It might be about what I've spoken about. But well, this is a gift where we allow ourselves a bit of time just to listen to see what God wants to say to us. So I invite you to put your hands out. It's just a sign of being open to receive. Um, it's not magic. If you're uncomfortable doing it, that's fine. But it's just a way of using our body language, what God gave us to worship him. And we come with open hearts, open minds to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit.
I just feel that the um, as we talk about reading the Bible, a word that was shared this morning is uh, this idea of tenderness, and um, and and it's just it's just knowing that God longs to be in that relationship with us. And I don't know if it's because we're linked to HTB, but I feel like the elephant in the room when it comes to Scripture can be things like the Bible in one year, where we start off and we smash January and we get through February a little bit and then it starts to waver and we actually just end up giving up. And I just want to encourage you that, um, I'm just going to pray that, Lord, I thank you that you just long to be in relationship with us. They are not bothered about how we do it. You just want us to spend time with you in your presence. And I just pray that for this coming week for each of us, I pray for your blessing of that time where we come to you, come to your word, that you bless us, that we hear your voice. I think it's important to realise that there are some parts of the Bible that are hugely complex and challenging, um, but through it we see a God who is faithful and we see a God who is with his people. And so I pray that uh, this week as we open our Bibles, Lord, we pray that we will see your faithfulness depicted through it. Mm. And Lord, we will see your holiness through it. And Lord, may it be a light to our paths this week, we pray. Amen. Amen.
at your feet again and we say amen let your will be done in us we Remain standing as we continue in prayer. I'm going to be praying out loud for our world, our city, and our church. Just going to read through the reading one more time. Just listen. One of the things that speak out to you as we think about praying for our world 
Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. So I just invite you to raise your voice as we pray out loud for our world together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love this world. I thank you. It's in your son. And we thank you that you long for us to know you more. We pray for you to step into those places where we see war, where we see people being hurt. Lord, we pray for your healing and your peace to be there. I pray that you fill them afresh, that your spirit moves over them, bringing healing and reconciliation, Lord Jesus. So we're going to move on by praying for our city. And Lord, there is so much need in this city. Lord, we thank you for the ways that you have been moving across Lincoln, what you're doing here and in other churches. And Lord, we pray your hand of blessing over all our initiatives. And as we think about our city, uh, we can think of those people in it that God has placed on our hearts. And perhaps as we um, look ahead to autumn and doing uh, another alpha, Lord, perhaps you have put those people in our hearts and those cities in this city. So let's just pray out loud for our city, for our schools, for our churches, for the council. Let's just pray out loud now. Lord Jesus, we just pray that you continue to fill this city with your love and your presence. We thank you for our brothers and sisters who are in the other churches working to make you known. May we be a light, a beacon, a place of hope where we can draw close to you and know you. Lord Jesus, fill us fresh, we pray. We pray that you fill us fresh, that we would be a mouthpiece for your glory and your wisdom. Finally, we pray for our church. We pray for um, one another in this room and this church as we go out into all the places we go. We get to into schools, we're in colleges, we're in our workplaces. We get to spread so far being ambassadors, carrying the good news of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that as we leave this place, our hearts are set on fire with love for you. We thank you that you love us and that is that freedom we walk in. Is that freedom of love and knowing that we belong to you that sets us free and makes us stand out from others? We pray, Lord, that as we find ourselves in our everyday situations, that we remember that you are with us. So I just invite you to look around the room and to just pray out loud again for those around us, those places where we know people are going, whether it's, it's going to be, I know schools are broken up, but those who are living with friends who may not know Jesus, those opportunities to be sharing that good news. So let's pray out loud together for our church. Let's go. Lord Jesus, I thank you for each of these people who you love, who you call by name. And I just pray that you use them, you use their gifts and their powers, which is found in you. I thank you for those opportunities that we have. And I just pray that you inspire us by your Holy Spirit to speak out in wisdom to speak out, to bring a life in those places that maybe people feel lost and abandoned. We thank you that you are the light that dispels all darkness. We thank you that you love us and call each of us. So we're going to share the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Our Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. During our last song together, we're going to be taking our collection. So buckets will be coming round. If you're visiting, allow it to pass you by. If you want to give, that would be great as well. Let's sing. It's an absolute belter to send us out. Let's go. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these gifts. We pray that you use them and bless them for your kingdom's sake. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. 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 So um, tonight is Kingdom Come for more prayer, more worship. Four of you are coming. Brilliant. And uh, I'd like to invite somebody of who um, you may not recognize. Uh, No, you will do. This is Ruth. Good morning. Hi. 
And Ruth is here to share a very exciting oh, venture. Joe's going to pass me my hat. It is a very exciting adventure. You're wearing and it again. Who, okay. who in this room has um, played Monopoly? Oh, that's good. Um, so uh, we're having a fundraising weekend in September. Um, I don't know whether you Ooh. all are aware. I know it's exciting. Yeah. Um, we have a complete floor upstairs, which is not complete. Um, that didn't make any sense, did it? We have a second floor upstairs, which is not yet complete. It is still needing quite a lot of work. And we are desperate to get up there because um, we know that God's going to use it for the city and um, for our communities. So we're having a fundraising weekend um, in September, and it's going to be the Lincoln Monopoly weekend, okay? So the plan is you... Gail, I love that face. Gail's on board. That's good. Excellent. And um, the plan is that... Oh, do take a seat. Half of you sat down. And um, the plan is, OK, that you look at the Lincoln edition of Monopoly. It exists. It's right there. And on that Monopoly board, there are lots and lots of places in Lincoln. And the idea is that you get sponsored to visit as many of those places in just over 24 hours, okay? So we start at 4 p.m. on the Friday. We finish at 12 p.m. on the Sunday. Photographs will be needed to prove that you have been to those places in that time. No cheating. And then on the Sunday at 12 o'clock, we're going to meet together in the Castle Grounds and have a massive picnic, and we're going to award a remarkably exciting gift prize. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it will no, be I'm good. I'm gathered. Yeah. Um, a remarkably exciting prize to whoever has visited as many of the places on the board as possible. There are also little twists along the way, because obviously when you play Monopoly, you can take a chance. Take a chance. Take a chance. Take a chance. I knew it. Uh, you can enter a beauty contest. Uh, you can get free parking, apparently. Don't know where in Lincoln. Not in Lincoln. Not in Lincoln. And uh, a community chest. So there'll be little things to do throughout the weekend that may take you slightly out of your comfort zone. But it's all going to be great fun. So if you head to our website, saintswithens.org forward slash, that's forward to you, isn't it? Uh, Monopoly, stcwithens.org forward slash Monopoly. You can download a sponsorship form. There's also some information on there about places to visit, all the info you need. I'd love to hear a big whoop whoop because I think it's going to be great fun. <laughs> whoop, whoop. I mean, it was a bit delayed, but they did it. it was... You can get them to do anything, can't you? What else should I get them to do? No, no. Um, yeah, so if you want to dress up as a Monopoly person as well, I know some of you like... Gail again, she's there, um, then feel free. Um, but we would love you to get on board with it and raise as much money as we can to get the ballroom upstairs up and running so that we can have our services and much, much more there. <laughs> I've stopped there. Well done. Thanks. There's also a QR code as well on your screens if um, you want all the information. It's there as well. So let's stand together as we get ready to leave. As we go out into our coming week, I just pray that you know that the Lord Jesus is with you. We pray that as we enter your word that we will find life. We thank you that it is the streams that refreshes, that nourishes. I pray for the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to be with all of you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. See you next week.